E3 season is almost upon us, and just like Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, gamers everywhere are about to be visited by three spirit-infused events from Nintendo, Xbox, and Sony. Oh, it's just Jeff Keighley. And rumors are churning that Sony may be visiting us first with the May-based PlayStation Showcase. But what will they have to show us? Let's find out. Sony's in a very interesting position. Overall, their gaming business is doing well, but over the last few weeks, they've had some blunders with how they've managed their expansion into the PC space. With the PSN requirement fiasco over Helldivers 2, and now similar requirements causing refunds over the new PC port of Ghost Tsushima, it just seems like they're going through a bit of a rough patch. But as the old saying goes, this too shall pass. And what a better way to make people forget than give them something else to be excited about. And I think we may have a few things to be excited about in store. Starting off with Insomniac's Venom Lethal Protector. Now this was a game that was leaked earlier this past year whenever a developmental roadmap showed that Insomniac was all in on Marvel, at least for the next few years. This Venom game is supposed to take place after the events of Spider-Man 2, which full disclosure, I have not played yet, but my gosh did I love the first one. Literally, it was a game that brought me to tears by the end of it. And big shout out to the shorter but also excellent Miles Morales. Now, this Venom game is supposed to set up the events of Spider-Man 3, which we can roughly say will come from sometime between 2027 and 2028. And I'll be honest, I'm excited about this game. Like any 90s kid, Venom was the anti-hero of the decade. And I can only imagine we'll be in for a ride with another stellar open world action RPG like From Insomniac. And maybe, just maybe, we get a slight update on their Wolverine project as well, which is supposed to hit sometime between 2025 and 2026. And while I love Venom, it would be a special treat to get an update on Weapon X as well. Next in the lineup is Resident Evil. Resident Evil games of late have had a tendency of debuting at PlayStation-based showcases, and recent reports are suggesting we should expect to see an update on Resident Evil 9 very soon. So I can't imagine why it won't be at this upcoming PlayStation showcase. Moreover, Based on recent reports from renowned Capcom leaker Das Gulam, it sounds like this game will be a first for the series, as it's reported to be taking place in a fictional island in Southeast Asia that's heavily inspired by Singapore. Additionally, while past reports suggested the game was delayed, it now seems like we may see it released at some point in early 2025. Now, I'll be honest, I'm one of those weird Resident Evil fans who loved the game as a kid, but honestly had a hard time playing it. I can't be alone on this. Horror movies don't bother me, and I even read all of the Resident Evil books that released back in the day, but man, did I struggle with the games. Now, I'll also add I'm trying to change that, and I'm looking forward to covering some of the new RE remakes and releases here on the channel as a part of my retrospective late review series, which check it out if you haven't already. So when RE9 is announced, I'll be excited, even though I'm probably one of those gamers that plays it with the lights on. Another Capcom title that we may get some news on is the long-delayed sci-fi action-adventure game, Pragmata. Originally announced in June of 2020 and slated for a 2022 release, it was eventually delayed, delayed, and delayed again. And at this point, we're kind of left in the dark on the game. We haven't heard anything about it for a few years, and recent reports suggest that now is the time we finally get a big final update on it. Again, reliable Capcom leaker Dust Gulam gave out some details on what the exact plot may be about. And to quote him, Pragmata is about two robots who lived on a failed attempt to colonize the moon, which was abandoned after robots and AI took over the moon and humans just disabled their ability to reach them on Earth rather than deal fully with the problem. And we play as these two robots who are starting to become strikingly human through the robot's evolving desire to go back to Earth. And yes, it's an action narrative game. End quote. And after reading this, it honestly sounds a quite lot like Nier Automata, but I'm willing to give it a chance. The original trailer looked quite impressive, and I won't be surprised if we get a holiday 2024 release on this title. Keeping the role going with Capcom titles, the next big release in the Monster Hunter series, Monster Hunter Wilds, is being reported for a Q1 2025 release, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get a lot more detail on the game at this showcase. Moreover, a recent article on Eurogamers suggests the game may indeed be a fully open-world experience for gamers to dive into. 
that director Yu Yu Takuda, who also helmed Monster Hunter World, has been given, quote, complete freedom on the creation of this game. Now, the same article takes its source from again leaker Das Gulam, but does call out it seems that this leak came from an imposter, which does add a little bit of dust to the veracity of it. But honestly, without the leak, all of this seems like the next evolution we could expect from the successor to World. In many ways, World was a streamlining of the series, taking away some of the more unique intricacies the series was known for as it grew in popularity in Japan and the East. And while folks all over the world have been enjoying Monster Hunter since the 3DS days, World was a big splash to bring the brand into a huge new audience. So when I think on how they could attempt to improve it, an open world experience makes a lot of sense. Either way, with it looking at an early 2025 release or at some point next year, I would expect us to hear more and even get that tentative release window or date. 2020's Ghost of Tsushima may indeed be the best game to come out that year, and it was a year which was jam-packed with amazing games. And the long-anticipated wait for the announcement of a sequel has had gamers in anticipation for over four years now. And I think it's probably a safe bet that we're going to get something about the sequel to Tsushima at this PlayStation Showcase. Now, Sucker Punch did an amazing job supporting the lifespan of the first entry, including the PS5 Director's Cut Edition and the surprisingly unexpected, value-packed, free edition of their Legends mode, a few months after the release of the game as well. But we really haven't heard a thing about a sequel or what this studio could be working on since then. In this month, we're also seeing the long-awaited PC port of Ghost as well, which to me seems like a perfect opportunity to build hype for a sequel. One, introduce PC gamers to the series, which PRN and PSN region fiascos issues aside, they will love. It's a superb game. And then boom, double whammy, announce a sequel exclusive to the PS5, and maybe it motivates some folks to join the PS5 ecosystem. But at the very least, it's perfect from a timing perspective to keep hype on the Ghost franchise for the early half of the summer. The next game rumored to make an appearance is the new title from Firewalk Studios, Concord. Now this is a title that very little is known about. And when I scour the internet, all that seems to come up is that it is some type of shooter with a heavy multiplayer focus. Additionally, earlier in 2024, some rumors suggested that it may be heavily inspired by Guardians of the Galaxy, which does pique my interest some. At the very least, it sounds like we have some type of new hero shooter from Firewalk, who has recently been acquired by Sony in 2023, and we know Sony has been wanting to double down on multiplayer games with live service elements, with many seeming to fail, but perhaps this game will surprise us. Keller me interested at the very least, as we should see something new about this game in the PlayStation Showcase. Team Asobi has impressed us over the last few years, specifically with their Astrobot-related titles. Astro's Playroom was a fun and interesting first-party game that came pre-installed on the PS5. I had an absolute blast with it. It hit all the right notes of that classic 3D platformer action we've all come to know and love over the last few decades with wonderful hints of fan service to PlayStation icons without overdoing it. It also had some fun and innovative ways to play as well. Now, we haven't seen anything from the Astro universe since the launch of the PS5, but reporters suggest that we may be in store for a brand new Astro game this year. And what a better time to reveal it than their big June showcase. Now, if this is true, I imagine this is coming as a standalone game versus the free pre-installed playroom we received at launch. I can't see it being a $70 game, but at the very least, if it's been in development for the last three or four years, I would expect it to be a bit bigger than Playroom, which again, I'm honestly excited about. That was a fantastic game. That's a game I platinum, and I don't do that often. So if this is announced, I'm one of those people who would be weirdly excited to see something new for this somewhat new, but excellent PlayStation IP. Next up, we have House Marquee. House Marquee is one of my favorite studios under the Sony umbrella. Their most notable and recent release was the 2021 Returnal, an absolutely gorgeous third-person roguelike shooter. Now, there have been reports that the team's been working on a completely new IP for a while, with studio leads even affirming it after some folks from House Marquee accidentally slipped and spilled the beans in past interviews. And the only thing we've really heard about this new IP is that they're looking to incorporate a lot of the elements that hit the cutting floor during the development of Returnal. Now, what does this mean? It can mean anything, perhaps gameplay elements, story and narrative elements, and so much more. But at the very least, I would wager we should expect to see another type of shooter to some degree. Will it be roguelike? Maybe. I love rogue games, so that would make me very excited. But if we look back at House Marquis library, from Alienation to Rezogun to Dead Nation, we know they make excellent shooters. So at the very least, I'm expecting it will be within that genre, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for us. 
Now, this next prediction is a shot in the dark, which to be fair, all of these statements could fall under as well, but I'm guessing we see something from Square and that it's most likely Final Fantasy related. Now, continuing with the shot in the dark mentality, I'm wondering if we see something about the rumored remakes of Final Fantasy Tactics or Final Fantasy IX. Now, again, these and everything else are really just rumors, some with heavy connection to industry insiders, but these two titles specifically have been talked about for a while now as reasonably within works. Tactics would be a great game to see again, a game like many others I missed out on. And Final Fantasy IX, when discussed as a remake, is reportedly not in the fashion of the grand Final Fantasy VII reimagination, but an updated, polished, modernized revisit of the same contained game. And even if these are revealed at the Sony showcase, I would expect them to release everywhere that they could, day and day. Perhaps even the sequel to the Nintendo Switch, which I am calling the Super Nintendo Switch and have been for quite some time. Now, sticking with Square titles, let's go for another long shot in the dark, but again, I think a reasonable one, Kingdom Hearts 4. We haven't heard anything about Kingdom Hearts 4 since the initial reveal in April of 2022. We know it's been in development since January of 2020. We also know based on interviews with team members associated with the game that characters from the upcoming mobile release, Kingdom Hearts Missing Link, are supposed to make an appearance in Kingdom Hearts 4 and somehow it's connected to the story of 4 as well. Well, Missing Link isn't out yet, but it's supposed to be hitting at some point this year. There's been a few closed betas for it on iOS devices with an Android beta slated as well. So with the fact that this game is close, I wouldn't be surprised if we see something about Kingdom Hearts 4. Typically games of the AAA variety have a five to six year long dev cycle at the least, and we're nearing the end of that cycle. And while Square definitely has a tendency to reveal games too soon, at this point, the cat is out of the bag. And while we might not be getting anything on the game, a new trailer with some targeted release timeframes would definitely be nice. So that's it. That's the PlayStation Showcase predictions from my point of view. Again, a lot of them are rumors and speculations, many of which come from industry insiders who have a track record of being true. But all this could be wrong, so who the heck knows? Again, I've said it before, I'm not Sean Spencer, I'm not a psychic, but I'm hopeful that we're gonna see some of these titles at this PlayStation Showcase. Now, when will it happen? Again, Jeff Grubb has said that it could happen this week, it could happen next week, but at some point in May is the targeted time frame, which again is interesting. The E3 window is that early June time slot, but PlayStation seems to be wanting to get a head start on the excitement, which I'm all about. But let me know your thoughts. Did I miss anything? Are there any classic PlayStation franchise that you wanna see return? Are there any third party games that you hope to see more about as well? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And as always, happy gaming.